all those disputes and more that this union's been involved in has had one thing in common, and that is that we ain't afraid to walk the walk as well as talk the talk. And what I mean by that is use the strike to defend our members. And that is one of the things as well, comrades, that makes our union what it is. In all these cases, I say, I may have missed a few and I apologise for that. We demonstrate that we are a fighting union. Comrades, politics, this union cannot afford to ever think, I believe, that politics is something we can opt out. I, like you and like many other people, am sick to death of careerist politicians. There isn't one that comes on the TV anymore, it appears, who nobody's got the time of day for. I can't believe a word that's coming out of their mouths, and I feel that too. But you see, politics affects every single thing we do, and our forefathers that went before us knew that too. It is to the eternal shame of Brown and Blair before him that this Labour government has governed in the name of Labour, but regrettably on all too many occasions has governed as Tories, and everyone knows that, and at every union meeting I've been to, you hear that time and time again, it was death day. And I'm very pleased and I'm very proud of the way that we have cooperated in the past few years in defence of workers in the railway and in the wider trade union movement, and I think it's, as I've said before, it's been to everyone's benefit. Because from my perspective, for too long, indeed for far too long, we've allowed the bosses to divide and to rule us, forgetting that in at least, at least 95% of the issues and the matters that pertain to our members, we were in and are in complete agreement. And we've allowed ourselves to be each other's throats. Over what? Over the very small few issues that divide us. And that's been to nobody's interest but to the bosses. We were, we've been fighting each other when we should have been fighting a common enemy. The forces of capitalism, and I see them encapsulated in all of the posters that you have around us here. And was it not Indira Gandhi who said, you can't shake hands with a clenched fist? Well, I'm very pleased that the TSSA and the RMT have together, together, transformed that clenched fist into an open hand of friendship. As you know, globalization has turned the world into a tiny village where the multinational corporations and the transnational corporations relocate from a place to another without any obstacles and hindrances. And privatization become a sharp sword on the necks of our workers, particularly under this violent attack of liberalization and anti-unionism. And the persistent endeavors of employers to create yellow unions not only to combat with the benefits as for the bona fide trade unions, but also to undermine the pillars of the trade union organizations in the entire world. RMT is still a growing organization. It means that you are doing a very good job. As you, when you can say you are the fastest growing union, that has to mean that. And I think organizing is one of the most important things a union can uh, work with. Without a good organizing work, no future. You have to have new members for to build the future. And in more and more countries around the world, we see that the trade unions are putting more resources into organizing, uh, because that's so important. In our country, we also put a lot of resources into organization, and we, in Norway, are the fastest growing organization, like uh, you. So uh, you have to work for it, but if you work for it, you will su have success. Hundreds and thousands of Irish workers voted against the referendum because they were concerned about job security, about privatization, the casualization of labor, the, the contracting out, and the ratcheting down of workers' conditions, which is ongoing and rampant throughout the island of Ireland and indeed international experience, which is just here in the UK, in the States and elsewhere. And clearly, sisters and brothers, we took a decision, along with hundreds and thousands of workers, to send a very strong signal. Social Europe has to have an equal footing with the economic welfare of the free market. And as far as we're concerned, 
It, we don't accept that the uh, rising tide lift all, lifts all boats. We want to be part of a social Europe that has respect for the dignity of workers and respect for the dignity of people in, in terms of a society where they can enjoy quality health care, uh, accessible and affordable, qu quality housing and quality social services. And unfortunately, all of the indicators so far from Europe would seem to suggest that they're going in the complete opposite direction. And I am certainly proud of the fact that we signalled stop to that direction. And I hope that you will uh, be pleased that we've took that decision, co colleagues. After all that being said and done, we believe that the struggles in the future will be harder and that we feel that these challenges will be dealt with with more confidence since we have the support from every worker in the world. Dear colleagues, it is a for privileges and an honor to be able to be here with you and witness and learn from your union in action to serve and to discuss the future of our struggle with you. So what's the lesson here? The lesson for unions today is exactly what it was decades ago, that workers of the world need to unite. The Teamsters Union believes that we need to fight fire with fire. We must join together in solidarity to protect the interests of transportation workers across the world. As corporations grow stronger and cross national boundaries, so must we seek to merge and seek strategic alliances that will allow us to compete on an even footing. Da, și asta ar trebui să nu se simtă atâta timp cât uh, suntem uniți în activitatea noastră împotriva globalizării și a privatizării mai cu seamă, forțate. The distance doesn't matter as long as the same we have all the same problems, privatization și globalizare. And the globalization. <coughs> și în aceste condiții fiecare trebuie ca să luptăm pentru toate drepturile oamenilor pe care îi reprezentăm. De altfel, eu sunt un ceferist din tată fiu. From this point of view, we have to fight for the workers we represent, for the people we represent. We have to fight for their rights. We need to smash these anti-trade union laws. They've got to be repealed. Some people start saying, well, let's take a bit here and a tweak a bit here. The whole lot of the laws have got to be taken away because all of those laws do nothing for the worker whatsoever but allow the employer to put the boot into the workers day in, day out. And it's about time this TUC, and it's about time the trade union movement got off its knees, as Jim Larkin said, the only reason they look big is because we look up to them. And the time you stand up to them, they're no more bigger than what we are. The reality is, Then bosses sit there and they scheme all day long, and it's the workers out there that run the industries. But I'll tell you what, if the board of directors went on strike, you wouldn't know the difference in network rail. But I'll tell you what, the workers don't come into work, the industry stops, and that's why the power of the workforce has got to be within the trade union to fight back. Solidarity forever, and let's smash these unjust anti-trade union laws. <laughs>